Jesus. Uh, I'm not used to lights in the face. Um, as the presenter said, I'm Massimo Luraski from Subsquid. I'm the developer advocate. And today I'm here to talk about uh, indexing and how indexing will be enabling the Web3's mass adoption. Um, in doing this presentation or in preparing it, uh, I thought about my experience as a um, transitioning, while transitioning from Web2 to Web3. Web and uh, my experience as a developer, uh, how this um, this whole like experience shaped me, and what I think should look like, what I think uh, mass adoption should look like. And I'm actually happy that after me, there's a, a whole panel about mass adoption. So uh, this is actually very very uh, on point. Um, so that's why I created the presentation, and uh, I want to talk about like the user's point of view. Oh, this is a much better spot. Um, the, for, for me, uh, as a gamer, most of all, and a, as a user of web services, I want to talk about like, what happens when I use web services today, Web2 web services. What we're trying to do here as a community in Datsama, we're trying to substitute many of them uh, with the Web3 alternative. So as I go to a traditional finance service, I'm presented with a nice uh, trade view chart that fills in instantly. I can play around with it. I can zoom in uh, and everything. So um, we're trying to substitute that. And how do we do that? Like, this is the question I'm trying to uh, answer today. The same goes when I use basic services like file storage. I don't want my list of files stored. If I store it in a Web3 service, I want to consult a web page that gives me the same user experience, if not better. So I want that list to be loading instantly. Uh, if I go to a web streaming, like a video streaming service, I want my recommendation to load as I scroll through the page. I don't want to wait for 10 seconds, like look at staring at a spinning wheel uh, for the recommendation engine to fetch data directly from the blockchain and present it to me. Uh, similarly, if I play a video game, gaming, I think personally, as a fan um, of it, uh, is the next frontier, is the next, battle, next battleground for uh, crypto mass adoption. Uh, and when I go to play a game, in this case World of Warcraft, if I scroll through the auction house, like imagine in the future, this is like, these are all NFTs, these are all stuff that I play, earn, and potentially sell. Uh, and I want this uh, to have the same service, the same level of uh, refined experience that I find in everyday games today. Uh, and this is actually funny to me, especially this screenshot. I was listening to the, the other day to Zoe's presentation uh, about Fala World. She was presenting a lot of like World of Warcraft screenshot, and I was like DiCaprio meme staring, like pointing at the screen, uh, thinking about this. So it's nice to see that like this whole thing resonates across the uh, ecosystem. So it means that we're in tune. But let's talk about the tools. Like, this is Polkadot.js, uh, well, this is the web app page. But if you want to build those services, this is what we have right now. Like, or this could be what we have right now. Imagine trying to repl replicate that user experience only using this. Um, it would pretty much look like this, right? Trying to, like, be a MacGyver and stitch in uh, um, a lot of, like, spaghetti code uh, and, be, and generating a very heavy, uh, client, because this is all client-based. If you're trying to build uh, your web services uh, with the blockchain as your only backend, it means that your client has to do a lot of the heavy lifting. So it would basically be the, the diagram above, where you're fetching data directly from the blockchain, and you have to do a lot of heavy processing on the client. What we're trying to propose, what we want to um, advertise or like suggest at Subsquid, or make possible, most importantly, is to recreate the same user experience, uh, both as a user and as a developer, uh, that you have in Web2, where you have a middleware in between, and you don't actually fetch data directly from black blockchain. Um, your data is actually sort of cached, quote unquote, in uh, a middleware, where you can build your front end in the same way by, by classic API, APIs. And uh, 
you would say, oh, yeah, actually, I had, this is last, edi uh, last edition from last night. It's already happening. There's already services. Now, this is just a dashboard, but uh, Canaria land sales, it's exploding uh, these days, and the community from Canaria built this dashboard using Subsquid. We didn't even ask them, but they put badges powered by Subsquid in there. I think they were so excited with the uh, experience in developing it that they felt the, the urge to put it there. Um, um, personally, this is like sharing my personal experience as a dev advocate. Uh, part of my job is to connect with these people, help them out, and it's super rewarding to uh, get the feedback from them, uh, listen, the positive and the negative at times, like how maybe they struggle with uh, understanding part of the, the SDK, or in, most of the times, especially in this case, see that they were happy that I solved some problems for them, and this is the final result. Um, this is another um, project uh, on Astar, in, in, uh, instead, and uh, it basically goes back to the first slide, to the first service, like providing financial services and have UIs that are snappy, that load instantly, and this is possible thanks to a middleware. Um, but you would say, in the end, what you, pro what you promise is just a, a lighter front end, and that is not true, because um, it's not just about caching instant, uh, like caching data, and so uh, make sure that your um, your UI is snappy and loads instantly, but it's also about scaling. We talk a lot about scaling here, scaling solutions, uh, and web services also needs to scale with the amount of users that uh, connect to your platform. And blockchain is simply not made for that. You cannot rely, solely rely on RPC calls. You, the, the nodes will be your bottleneck. Instead, where uh, if you have a middleware, you can uh, separate the concerns and make sure that um, you can build your middleware to respond to a vast amount of uh, read-only calls to fuel your, your UI. And you can only think about the, the like scaling your blockchain uh, network for the, re, uh, the writing of it. So transactions and uh, requests that imply, um, well, writing to the blockchain. Um, but it's not just that. It's also a dev, a better dev experience. Uh, because, um, once again, you can separate the concerns. You don't have to modify your runtime to adapt to your UI. You can have front-end developers that have their own requests, their own needs. I need my API uh, to be shaped like this because I need to, to show this data. Uh, you can create, uh, with, thanks to a middleware, you can create aggregations on top of blockchain data. You don't have to do it in your runtime. It would be impossible or f futile uh, to do it. Whereas if you develop your, um, um, your DAP, thinking uh, about having, or thinking that you can do this with, your, with a middleware, you can shape your middleware however you want to, however you need to. However, your UI needs to uh, needs to um, needs, like however your your UI needs to essentially, um, and yeah, that's basically the point. It's decoupling, decoupling front end, back end, and blockchain development. Those are three different aspects, and you don't need to group them up. They don't need to be interdependent. And you say, but indexing is slow. So that's why at Subscript we focused a lot on making it fast, on making sure that. Whenever you have to change something in your middleware, you don't have to wait uh, a long time for indexing, for re-indexing to happen. Um, because any significant changes in the API requires a full scan of the blockchain. Uh, but uh, that's why our latest release, which we call, uh, it's codenamed FireSquid, is able to index Kusama balancing transfers in 15 minutes. It, the average per performance is like 50K blocks per second, 50,000 blocks per second. Um, and this enables mm, developers to have the freedom of making any changes to your API as, as often as you want to, without having to wait for days for the middleware to be re-indexed. And this is how it's done. Um, we have a separation of uh, the... Um, the processing of the uh, business logic and the indexing. Those are uh, we, what we call FireSquid archives, and those basically do the pre-indexing, they do the normalization, they take care of being in sync with the blockchain and having all the necessary data 
in the in the normalized form, which uh, um, then it gets exposed through um, a GraphQL gateway in the form of uh, events, um, extrinsics, if present, EVM log, or now with the contracts palette, uh, contract log. Um, and those are queryable, those are filterable, which means that when I build my processor, I can perform requests in batches, and I can per perform requests uh, for filter data. I don't need all of the data on the blockchain. I'm only caring about, for example, uh, in the example that I just made, I only care about balances transfers. So I only request those, and the network traffic is minimal. It's reduced to only the data that I need. So FireSquid archives take care of the heavy lifting, and my API is going to be nimble and agile, fast, uh, and will require a lot less storage as well. How does it look? When I'm developing my API, the only thing I need to take care of is instantiating my processor class, um, setting the data source. In this case, I'm telling it I'm connecting to uh, Kusama Archive, and I'm telling it I'm interested in the balances transfer event. And furthermore, I can filter it down. There's going to be another slide about it, but in this case, I'm telling it I'm only interested about the event arguments. I don't need to know, um, I don't need, in this case, information about the extrinsic that generated the event itself. Then what happens, uh, I define my logic in here. When I launch the processor, um, essentially uh, decoding all of the transfer information, and I'm putting the right stuff in the right places, essentially. The difference here is that this request is done in batches, and processed in batches. So I uh, connect to the processor, I, I, let, I tell him, look, I want all of the balances transferred. Can you please give it to me in a batch of like 500 at a time? I get this bundle of 500 uh, events in one go. If I'm um, requesting more than uh, one type of event, it's gonna be a mixture of them, uh, which is a little bit of a, bit of a paradigm shift. I need to think more like it's a bit of a paradigm shift, the same that, uh, that you would do when you develop in MATLAB, for those that, that have done it. You have to think vectorial. I'm, I'm getting a bundle of these guys, and I need to process them um, as, as a vector. So it kind of looks like this, where I have an array of items. Um, and I need to know that I, I don't know which type. In this case, it's only one, so it's easy. But uh, it essentially, do have to do some sort of like uh, sorting or put the right, like, like I said, put the right things in the right places. But uh, the, and it can be, it can be taxing if you want to, because you have to think about it differently, but uh, this is how you obtain the performances, because it minimizes the I.O. towards the disk. I process in a batch, and I only save at the end of the batch, so the lazy uh, transaction towards the database makes sure that you get 50 blocks per second performance, as you can see here. Uh, I mean, it's a giant wall of logs, but you can see here, 50K per second. And uh, what other features are in the latest release, apart from uh, immense speed? Um, we have auto-unwrapping of pseudo-batch and proxy calls. This is transparent to the, to the processor. Uh, I don't need to even know that it's happening because the archives do the heavy lifting for me. So in that case, I don't, what does it look like? Uh, when, I, when I ask for calls, I have them directly. And those could have been uh, wrapped, like in the case of system remark. They could have been part of a batch all, uh, and normally they would have been hidden from me. I would have to ask for system remark call and batch all, and then look into the extrinsic uh, batch all and see if it contained. In this case, the archive did it for me. I'm only requesting system remark, and I get exactly that one. Um, another, another thing is, uh, like I mentioned it earlier, but I can fetch and process only the data that I need. So if I request, like in this case it's just a, uh, a post hook, so every block I, I'm requesting to execute a certain function, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm saying here is that uh, where every time I encounter a block, I only uh, want to be given the system extrinsic success, so only the extrinsic that succeeded. I don't care about those that failed. And I, uh, I want all, only, all, only the, um, the extrinsic um, 
signature data. So I can filter it down to have a minimal network overload. Uh, finally, but last but not least, actually, native support for WASM. I did a workshop yesterday. Unfortunately, it wasn't recorded, but there's going to be a demo. Uh, I'm probably going to record one on our YouTube channel, and we're going to put up a, an example repository. So yes, uh, Astar uh, has deployed the contracts palette. It's available on, on Shibuya and Shidden, and we have a live uh, example of indexing WASM contracts. So we're so early uh, in, the, in the ecosystem that uh, we had to deploy a sample contract, so it's not very interesting. But as soon as we, like we're in close relationship with the Aster guys, as, as soon as we have a live project, uh, I'm gonna make sure that we index that and show it to the community, make sure that the community is aware that th there is this possibility. <laughs> Uh, and you can see it for yourself. Uh, this should work, I haven't tested it, I have to admit, but it leads to our template repository, and you can see for yourself, uh, by just by following the, the quick start readme, uh, you can see for yourself the performance, like f the 50K blocks per second that I just talked about. Um, thank you for your attention. Uh, those are my contacts, uh, and uh, like, once again, Subsquid is not, this is not just about me. Uh, the contacts are there, are there just if you have any questions and especially for the audience, uh, anyone out there. Um, that's, that's my presentation, actually, yeah. super early. Thank you very much, Ms. Mo. <laughs> and yes, we have a few minutes if you have questions to, oh, okay, perfect. Ouch. Uh, well, thank you for your presentation. <clears throat> so this one, this question is more about indexes in general. Uh, please enlighten me if, if I'm uh, understanding this correctly, but I always had this uh, like concern in the back of my head about cached databases. So are there any security threats or concerns of using or hosting a indexer? And if there is, how do you mitigate those generally? That, that's, um, that's something I haven't talked about, so it's nice. Uh, thank you for the question. So. The archives that I talked about, um, those are for now managed by Subsquid, but it's just because we're not live yet. The ultimate goal is to create an, an economic system, an economic model that will guarantee that those will become a decentralized network. So infrastructure providers will come in and mm, deploy uh, an archive, we just have, we just provide the code for it, the image, uh, they will just deploy it wherever they want to host it, and they will have to, we, we're thinking about a system where they have to stake uh, tokens to make sure that they don't tamper with the data, and if eventually uh, something uh, fishy is discovered, we're going to slash their, their, their staking. So this is the mechanism, and I think we can build something uh, better. We were still like that. That is essentially besides develop, develop, developing the the product and the performance. This is, is probably going to be the main focus for Q3 and Q4, in the sense that okay, staking is fine, but maybe we can do something more, something better to guarantee that yeah, the data is not going to be tampered with, and you can rely on it. We don't do that for the. Um, processors for the, the API that you build yourself, because that's it, it, that is up to you. But um, I think that that is an answer that uh, dApps themselves will have to give to their users in the sense that, okay, you're processing uh, blockchain data and I'm secure in the fact that the source is uh, okay, but what about your processing? That is still, um, like, we need to think about it. But uh, in the end, it's your dApp, so, if you, I don't know, if you, if you do something fishy with it, uh, your user will eventually find out. Or, I mean, it's, it's, about, it's your reputation that is on, on the line, I think. Any question? No, I think so. Thank you very much. Thank you for the workshop. Thank, thanks once again. <laughs>